Hello and welcome to The Sociable Geek. My name is Daniel Egan. In this section, we're going to be talking to and actually showing you how to create a game character for your game using Inkscape. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing you'll need, obviously, is Inkscape. Uh, Inkscape is a scalar vector graphic program that allows you to create vector graphics. Now this is really important for two reasons. One, I'm using Inkscape because it is free and it's open source and it's awesome. Um, what we're going to be doing today, you can do very similar stuff in uh, Adobe Illustrator uh, and Corel Draw. Um, they all do the same thing. The key aspect of this, and we're not going to dive too deeply in that, is that a scalar vector graphic will allow you to uh, change the size of what we're drawing without it getting pixelated. You've all had those images, those JPEGs, whatever, that you tried to make bigger, and they got pixelated when you do that. A scalar vector graphic, without getting in the, into all the technical details of it, allows you to scale them without losing any of the fidelity. So if you don't have it already, download Inkscape at inkscape.org, because um, that's what we're, we're going to be using today. So let's go ahead and... The first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you uh, some things that I've done, or just actually one thing that I've done. I have a game called Dave in the Cave. Um, you can find it on uh, Windows Phone. You can find it on Android. You can find it on iPhone. Um, it's my first game, and uh, I did all the graphics for the game using Inkscape. And this is an image of Dave. Now, whether you think he's looks good or not doesn't really matter I'm very proud of uh, how he uh, came out I've had some help um, with him as well just like I'm helping you here uh, I wanted to really show you what goes into this and uh, I wanted to share with those people that don't think they can do this that they can quite honestly if you put a crayon a pencil anything like that in my hand I couldn't draw anything to save my life but I realized using a program like Inkscape, I am able to manipulate it in such a way that I can actually do stuff. So let's take a look at Dave. The first thing I'm going to do is, and you don't need to do this, we're not going to cover layers and stuff in, in uh, this program today, but I need to open this up so we can unlock some things. We're going to take a look at his, oh, actually it's already, I think, unlocked down here. We're going to look at his leg. Now, what I'm going to show you in his leg is the same thing for his entire body, okay? So, you know, I think it's pretty good. You know, he's, you can see his pants and his shoes and his jacket and everything else looks pretty stylish, right? Let's kind of drill into his leg. And this is what we're going to be learning to do today. If we actually look at his leg, you'll see that it's made up of a bunch of of different stuff, right? It's not just one continuous, you know, I didn't take a pen and draw this. What it's actually made up of is just a bunch of circles and squares. And again, his whole, the whole character is made up like this. If I start to pull it apart, you'll notice that it really is just circles and squares. The, sh the shoe is the same thing. You know, I could pull these apart, etc. Uh, this was a square that I just modified. And you'll notice that, I mean, this one's maybe a little bit tweaked out just because, you know, I wanted a pant leg to go out. But even stuff like the shade, uh, or the shadows, I should say, are just objects that I've tweaked. So 90% of the stuff I do in my characters are circles and squares that I just modify. Again, here's the, you can see the, the shadows of stuff. And if we put it all back... You'll see I just kind of put it on top of each other. And there we're done. You know, I can modify this a little bit. You can see I've been playing with this. It's tweaked a bit. But that's it. And I show you that, not to show you Dave, per se, but to show you what we're going to be doing um, you can do. Now, you know, I went through a couple iterations before, you know, got to uh, the smoothness I liked in, in Dave and the other characters I created for the game. But it really does not take that long to learn. So the next thing I want to talk about is the IDE. Whatever 
environment you use, whether it's Adobe Illustrator, whether it's Corel Draw, whether it's you know your uh, development environments, whether it's Visual Studio or Eclipse or whatever, the first time you open up an I IDE, an environment like this, you're like, oh man, there is just so much stuff. How am I ever going to figure out what all of this does and what all of this means? You're not. At least you're not from me. Um, what I'm going to show you is what will help you. I call them the eight or nine things that you need to learn to be proficient in this. Not an expert, but be proficient and be able to create your own game characters. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off with a blank one, which I have right here somewhere. Let me just go ahead and start a new one. There we go. There's one. Just leave Dave behind it. And you notice when you open up Inkscape, um, you'll have this box here. Um, and, and that can be used for a lot of things. I actually prefer to not use it. So I'm going to turn it off. I go to uh, document uh, or file and uh, document properties. And when I do that, I'm going to take uh, show uh, page border and you'll see that it's gone. Now you could use this um, for when you're exporting and all that other stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that in another uh, video. Um, but I actually like to have that gone. So I have just a nice clean slate. So I'm not thinking that I have to draw within that little box, which you don't. Um, and so we're going to start very simple, and we're going to draw a character's head. And to do that, um, one of the items we're going to work with, I told you we're going to work with circles and squares. You can see squares right there, and a circle's right there. And again, I'm just going to show you the few things you need to know. So to draw a circle, you just, actually I double clicked on that, you just click on the circle, and click, and drag. Now, you'll notice that you can't see my circle. That happens sometimes because the reason I can't see mine is the last time that I used a circle, I colored it white and the background's white, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and color it right now. I'm going to color it a, a flesh tone. So I'm creating a person, right? But you'll also notice that it's not exactly a circle. Now I can... Uh, click on it, and what I did was click on this select tool, and I can try and make it a circle, and that looks about close. And all I did was drag one of these arrows out or in. Um, I could drag this one, and it takes the dimensions and keeps them. Um, but sometimes you want a circle, and you want an exact circle. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. If I click on the circle again, and hold down the, my control key, you'll see that it'll snap and create a circle for me. So I'm just clicking and dragging and it creates a circle. And now this is important. You'll notice that it looks different depending on what I have selected. So the circle properties that I'm able to modify, and we'll mo modify them some more later, I can only modify when I have the circle selected. You'll notice that goes away when I have the select tool selected. So if you get part way in this video and yours doesn't look like mine, it's because you maybe didn't have the circle selected or you didn't have the select tool selected. Okay, so now we have our circle. We have our head, right? I'm gonna make this just a little bigger. And that's a good start. You know, that's what we want to do. Um, but I need an ear for this. So I'm gonna grab another circle. Make it about yay big. Click on the select tool and move it over. And that's okay. And that'll work. But when I draw my characters, I like to have a, an outline around them. And right now you'll notice it doesn't. So I want to bring up the color palette and the stroke palette's there down here. And you notice down in the left-hand corner, you can see fill and stroke. Stroke, which is the line around the object, is none. And I actually want that to have one. So I'm going to double-click on this. And you'll notice that the fill and stroke panel come up here on the right. Now if I click on the stroke tab and 
and choose to have it filled with flat color, you'll notice that there's a line around it now. I actually want to make that a little thicker, so I go to Stroke Style. And there we go. Now, the problem is, if I want to do the same thing for the ear, let's see what, what I have here for a Stroke Style. Let's do it an even 20. So that they're the same. You'll notice now that when I put the ear here, it's not exactly what I want because now it's a circle on a circle and it doesn't look that great. So I'm going to show you uh, one simple tool and we're going to use this and just a couple others. I want to combine these two objects. So I'm going to click on the head. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to click on the ear. And I'm going to do path. And I'm going to do union. And now you can see it's actually one object. So now we have our head and we have our ear. So let's draw some eyes. It's starting to look like I'm in. Actually, if I flip this around, that could be his nose as well. So we could decide, you know what, you know what, let's actually do that. Let's let's draw one that'll look like his nose. And we'll put it on this side. But same thing. I want to uh uh, make this one, so I'm going to click on this object, hold down shift, click on the other object, and then go to path, and union. And there's his nose on the right hand side. That'll work for us. Um, so the next thing I want to do is draw eyes. So I'm going to grab a circle, and I'm going to draw what looks like an eye, but you know what? The eye is going to be white. And we're going to uh, place it on his face and move it around just slightly. And the next thing I'm going to do, you will do quite often. And actually for his eye, I'm going to turn off stroke. Okay, so we went to the stroke panel and we're going to turn off stroke. And uh, what I'm going to do is duplicate this object. Again, this is another key pillar of what we're going to be uh, doing and how you will build your characters. and. So this is duplicating, and to duplicate, I just do a Control D. It created a copy right on top. It's the same size, so you don't see it. I'm going to turn it black. And make it a little smaller. So now you see he has his eye. And actually, I want him to have color in his eye. So I'm going to duplicate this one, Control D. And I'm color it blue. But if you know how eyes work, the, the black will be ab above or in front of the blue, but it's behind it right now. I need to be in front of it. This is another key thing you'll need to learn. You've probably done this in a million programs, PowerPoint, whatever. But I'm going to select the object, and right here are things to move them forward or backwards. Um, you can think of it as Z order or just what's in front of what each other. Um, and so I can either lower it all the way to the bottom, which I don't want because it'll go behind the head, or I can lower it one step. I can raise it one step or raise it to the top. It's already at the top. So if I click on this and lower it one step, now you can see that we have the black that's in front of the blue. And we just need to do one more duplicate. So Control-D. Color it white, and we're going to make this small and thin. Make it even smaller. There we go. So there. Now we have now we have our eye, or at least you know something that will pass nicely as an eye. One of the things that is difficult here, though, is you'll notice that all these are separate. And so I have, uh, I want to manipulate this as one object, not separate objects. So you'll need to group this. And grouping it is really easy. You just lasso it. So by lassoing, you just take your mouse and draw a box. So I'm clicking and dragging, drawing a box around it. You notice that even though I was touching the head, only the stuff that's contained in the lasso is selected. And when I do that, I'll do 
uh, object and group. Now when I move it around, it's all it's all together. So now that we have one eye, we want to duplicate that. So we'll do Control D and move the other eye over. The other eye is farther away, so it needs to be smaller, but we're going to make this one bigger instead. So you have a little depth perception here. And there's our eyeballs. Okay, so we're, we're moving along now. Um, the next thing I want to show you is a tool you will use all the time. Now, you may have played with Bezier curves, and there's some really cool stuff you can do with this tool. I'm going to show you some simple things to do, th do with this tool. And the first one is we have to define the ear. And so I'm going to click on the Bezier curve or straight line tool. And then out here in this region, I'm going to click. I'm not holding down. I'm going to move. I'm going to click. Move, click. And then the last click will be right where I started, and it'll create an object. You can see that that object has no fill. Um, it's just got an outline. I actually don't want an outline, and I want it to be filled. And it's already the color black. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And now I'm going to choose the Select tool, just so I can move it over here a bit. And I want to... Uh, see this a little bigger. So I'm going to do uh, control and mouse wheel to make it bigger so I can manipulate it. You can also do this using the plus key on your keyboard or under view and zoom. You can zoom in or zoom out. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about are nodes. So you have the select tool and you have the node tool. And the node tool allows you to manipulate objects. So I showed you in that uh, leg, you know, there's circles and squares, but you can see some of them I, I manipulated a bit and moved out. Now, the nodes on the triangle that I built were right where I clicked, right? So I could grab those using the node tool and move those around if I wanted, right? But I actually need to, I want to indent it a little bit in here. So on any object, when you have this selected, I can double click and create the nodes where I want. And so I'm just double clicking and then moving them. And we'll show different kinds of nodes and talk about that in, in another video. But this allows me to manipulate the nodes. And I'm going to actually move this down just a tad here. And now I think that's the shape that I want. And what we're going to do with that, I'm going to select the select tool again, is duplicate it twice. So control D and then control D. And so we have three pieces. I move one there. The next thing I'm going to do is move this other one, but I want to rotate it. And so with the select tool, we've always just been selecting once and we can make it bigger, smaller, wider, etc. But if I click it again, you'll notice that it has these uh, rotate arrows on the corner. So I could actually rotate the object. And so now I'm going to rotate it. Rotate it a bit more. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. And we'll leave it just like that. So I could get more definition in the air and, and you know, I might want to rotate this one a little more or whatever. But you can see now that I'm using some objects to uh, give his ear a little more, more definition. And I would, you know, probably tweak that a little bit more. But I wanted to use that to show you a couple of techniques. One is the uh, rotating an object and two is the adding nodes and tweaking the nodes. Now the next part we're going to do is a lot of fun. We're going to create his mouth. So we're going to use a circle for that. And 
I'm going to create a circle right here. And I'm going to move it over a bit. I mean, we could leave it, you know, like that if we wanted. Um, and, you know, we can make him be screaming, which is what it looks like he's doing. But we actually want a half circle. And I told you that to have and manipulate circle properties, you have to have the circle object here selected in your panel. So if I click back to circle object, I double clicked by mistake, um, you can see that now I have uh, circle properties. So I have a couple of nodes on here and you'll notice one of them is a circle, circular node. And if I click on that, and you'll notice this on the, the squares that we're creating too. If you want rounded corners, you'll see this and this will allow you to give rounded corners to it. I want to make a half circle. So you can make you know any uh, percentage that you want. And I'm going to make that a half circle so that looks more like his mouth. And then we'll tilt it a little bit to give it the angle we want. Right, so he's starting to come together. Um, now I want to show you something that's going to happen to you. The next time you use a circle, it's going to keep the properties you used last time. So now when I try to draw a circle, it's going to draw a half circle, and you're going to be going, oh, what is going on? Um, the way to fix that is you'll notice up here, when you have circle selected, you can't have this selected, but when you have circle selected, you'll be able to restore it to full circle. Okay, You can try and drag it around, but that's a pain. Um, if you want to restore it to cir full circle, just... Uh, make sure you have circle selected, and then you can select that. And that will only these will only appear if you have anything left than a full circle, right? So you can see you have other manipulations, et cetera, but we want a full circle. And I just show you that because next time you use a circle, you're going to be going crazy. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is something you'll use... Oh, again and again and again and again and again. And it's a really super cool technique. And we're actually almost done here. We're going to do two things. We're going to give him teeth and we're going to give him hair. And these are the funnest parts. Now, let's zoom in on his mouth, right? I could use a tool and try to draw teeth, you know, straight in there and make it fit perfectly in his mouth. But I don't want to do that. I want to I want it to fit perfectly in his mouth, right? So the first thing I want to do is make sure he has no stroke on there. That's good. And I want to use that Bezier Curve tool uh, to draw some lines like we did before. And I'm going to click outside his mouth. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to move. Remember, I'm not dragging. I'm moving. So I clicked and I'm moving across his mouth where I want his teeth to be. And then I'm just going to click outside his mouth and then finish it where I started so it actually creates an object. Now it just looks like an outline. You can fill it if you want so you can see, you know, the two objects. That's fine. You know, we don't have stroke on there. You didn't have to do those last three steps. The object we had before is fine. But now you can see there's two objects, right? The The type of rectangle that we have here and we have the mouth. What I want is to create an object that is the intersection of those two. So the first thing I need to do is duplicate the mouth. So I click on the mouth and do control D. And then I'm going to, like we did before, hold down shift and click on the other object. And I will go to path and intersection. So this will just give me the piece that is the intersection between the two. Now the reason I had to create a new mouth is it will take two objects and create one. And I still need and want the mouth. So that's why we had to duplicate the mouth before we did this. So I'm going to go ahead and click intersection and turn them white, of course. And voila, you have teeth. You will use this again and again and again, drawing clothes. Whenever you need to fill something, you'll use that technique again and again and again. So the last thing we're going to do, and again, um, these are just some basics. You can see that I spent a little more time on Dave, um, but you can see the basics of a character and just go wild on this. Now, the one of the 
more fun parts is we're going to use that same tool again and we're going to give him hair. So I'm going to uh, just click and move and click and move and click and move and click and click and move to where I think I want his hair. Now I'm clicking along his ear right here because I want it to look like the hair is going behind. I'm going to give him some big mutton chops as well. I'm just clicking, moving, clicking and moving and then when you get to the end it'll create an object. It'll create the outline of the object and now we just want to give him hair. I mean we can give him red hair. We can give him some you know, brownish or brown hair. We can make him a blonde. You know whatever it is, whatever it is you want to do. I actually like the red hair for him. And now we have the beginnings of a character that we're gonna that we would use in our game. And you can use these techniques for every part of your game, whether it's the rocks in your background or dynamite exploding or whatever it is. Um, this will give you the five or six things you need to do again and again to start manipulating um, your character and start moving your character. Um, and so hopefully in this video I gave you the steps you need to get started. In the next video we're going to take this character and uh, give him a body and show you some movement and show you how you can do some very simplistic uh, animations to have a walking character in your game. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.